What is up, guys? Welcome to a midnight upload. We are going to uh, go over the team for our week three of the NPL Miners. This week we are taking on Fries or Freeze. I think it's Freeze. It's uh, Freeze Lander and his Rotterdam Raptors. Uh, this is the man that we played in March Madness who brought the wrong team for us. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I spoke with him before uh, before we even, like, while we were scheduling the match, and, like, he was certain that he was bringing the right team this time. So, that's good. Uh, very good news there, but um, anyway, let's go over what he has. He has uh, one of my favorite mons in league format, honestly, uh, Mega, uh, Mega Gardevoir, followed by another one of my favorite mons, Infernape, Tyranitar, Scizor, Gliscor, Gudra, Gengar, Blastoise, Licky Licky, and this is where things get interesting. He has Electrode and Leafeon, which are both his Z-mons. Now, as you guys have seen uh, probably multiple times by now, most coaches only have one Z-mon. But if you picked a couple of Z-mons, uh, you could pick two if you if both picks were under a certain amount of points. I can't remember what the exact amount was, but anyway, that's what Freeze did. He uh, he picked Electrode and Leafeon because they were both two points. So quite interesting. I believe he had better options, things like Infernape, uh, maybe even Gengar. But he opted for Electrode and and uh, Leafeon, so I'm not too worried about those mons. Electrode, I could see coming against me, but not so much Leafeon, uh, based on what I have on my team. So, uh, let's go over the team that I decided to bring for him. So, first mon that I noticed that I can put in a lot of work is going to be Salamence. Uh, once again, I'm bringing a Dragon Dance variant. So, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Flamethrower, and Dragon Dance. Uh, as much attack as possible, this guarantees an Oko. On Gudra after rocks, uh, of course, without I believe without being plus one, and if I'm plus one, I think I have a chance to knock it out uh, through Habanberry, if I'm not mistaken. So there's that. I am Moxie, of course. Flamethrower is there specifically for the Scizor, of course. Uh, we did something similar, I believe, last week with uh, Skarmory, and now we're doing the same with uh, with this Scizor here because it's the one thing standing in my way, of course, of sweeping. So I need the Flamethrower. I uh, decided to go minus F because I needed to have as much special attack as possible without actually investing in it. The HP and the defense is actually uh, quite crucial for taking a specific hit. And I can't remember what it is now, but um, it might be Infernape's uh, attack, like it's um, Hidden Power Ice through Yachi Berry, something like that. But anyway, uh, we are Yachi Berry, as you can see. The reason I'm Yachi Berry is because there's a lot of things on his team that can, can run ice coverage for this, uh, namely Infernape with a HP Ice. Uh, Gliscor with Ice Fang, Gengar with Icy Wind or Hidden Power Ice, and Blastoise with Ice Beam, as well as Licky Licky with Ice Beam or Ice Punch. So, uh, and Electrode, obviously, if it comes, uh, it's going to be faster than a plus one. I think it can be faster than a plus one Adamant uh, Salamence, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, can also run HP Ice. So, there is always that possibility. So, of course, we are Yachi Berry to prevent uh, whatever his revenge killer for Salamence may be to revenge kill it. Obviously, he's probably going to focus on Ice-type coverage. Um, maybe Tyranitar with Stone Edge. I don't see it because Earthquake is a thing. Uh, Gardevoir does die to uh, plus one Earthquake after rocks, even max HP, I believe. So uh, there is that. So I definitely do want to get up a Dragon Dance on some point. Some of my setup targets uh, are going to be things like um, Gliscor, if it doesn't have Ice Fang. Uh, there's also... Gengar locked into a move that can't kill me if it's uh, if it's Choice Scarfed, for example, uh, or Blastoise because Ice uh, weakened Blastoise because Ice Beam obviously can't kill me because of the Yachi Berry. I do have to be careful of a burn. Licky Licky is another potential setup target. Uh, Electrode because I have the Yachi Berry again, and uh, certain things like that. So I'm looking for opportunities to set up at any point in the game. Um, uh, also, if Titar locks itself into like, for example, Pursuit, so. That's always an option, because I do have Victini on this team, so if he brings Titar with Pursuit and it's Banded or it's Scarfed, then I get to um, I get to come in with Salamence after. I'm obviously not switching out, so his Pursuit's not powered up. Get up the Dragon Dance, try to sweep from there. So that's Salamence. Uh, went off on quite a tangent there, but uh, that's Grandina. Moving on to Hisui the Cresselia. This week we are bringing Psychic, T-Wave, Rest, and Skill Swap. Uh, I played around with this set a little bit. I tried to figure out what to bring. I saw that Crest got a skill swap, and I thought this could be very interesting because if he decides to bring Gliscor um, and tries to toxic me, I can actually steal his toxic his poison heal and he heal up while he's losing health. So that would be, and I don't need levitate for anything realistically. So 
that would be the idea there. The other thing that I could do if Gardevoir doesn't come with Substitute, I can actually steal its Pixelate and go into Umbreon. And I'm especially defensive Umbreon, so I can take on his Gardevoir at that point because his Hyper Voice becomes normal. So if he's uh, thinking that I might run Skill Swap, he could always bring Moonblast, but then Moonblast isn't going to do as much as Hyper Voice, clearly, because it's not Pixelate boosted, it's not uh, his most powerful move, so... There's that. Thunder Wave, of course, able to hit pretty much everything on his team except for Gliscor, uh, which was the idea behind running Skill Swap so I could take his Poison Heal. Uh, and then, of course, Rest. Rest is there. Uh, I'm running fully physically defensive, by the way, if you couldn't, didn't notice, because he does have an Infernape, and that thing is a huge threat to me, so I have to be very careful with that. Um, that's pretty much the only thing, is for Infernape. And, of course, I can take hits from Titar as long as it's not banded, so I could always get off a T-Wave on it. And uh, Rest is there. Uh, because I do believe I have Heal Bell. Yes, I do. So, um, rest is to make sure that, let's say I do take um, the poison from Gliscor and end up switching out later, losing that ability, coming back in with Levitate. I want to be able to rest it off. And uh, Moonlight's not going to be very good in this matchup because he does have the Tyranitar. Just need to pick something up. Just give me a sec. So, he has the Tyranitar. And uh, I definitely do not want to be moonlighting up as he can bring it in. Sand goes up, I only get back 25%. I'm pursuit trapped. That's bad times. So definitely rest over moonlight this week. I need the uh, the health on Cresselia specifically for the Infernape. Make sure that thing doesn't sweep me. So uh, it's not a Zemon, so I don't need to worry about um, Z Flare Blitz at plus two either. So yeah, this pretty much covers every Infernape. Moving on, we have Flare. Now, this is the most interesting set. As you guys can see, I'm serious nature. Uh, because I didn't want to drop any one of my stats. Uh, every stat was really, really important here. As you can see, I'm max HP or close to max HP. 164 attack, 16 special attack, 16 spadef, 64 speed. The 64 speed is styled speed, max speed scissor to make sure that he can't U-turn out on me. If he thinks if he thinks that I'm a fully bulky set, for example. The Assault Vest is there because this is going to be my Gardevoir response. I have nothing else on my team that can take on Gardevoir. My normal fairy check is uh, Weezing, but Weezing can't take Psychics from Guard, so uh, unfortunately it will not be able to check a Fairy as it is normally able to do, uh, as we saw with Mega Altaria uh, last week. But anyway, uh, 164 attack for more powerful V-Creates, U-Turn, I believe V-Create, uh, 2 hit KOs Gudra, if I'm not mistaken, um, with that investment. A gla I needed the special attack for a Glaciate to be able to break uh, Gliscor, uh, the Brick Break damage also on Titar, I needed to be able to kill the non choppel variant after rocks, um, even max HP. So that's why that's that attacks that way. Uh, V-Create obviously knocks out max HP Gardevoir, that's very important, is that I'm able to knock that thing out as well. Obviously it can run Shadow Ball for me, but I actually take Shadow Balls quite well thanks to the Assault Vest. Uh, I made the 16 Spadef as well just to give it a round number so that it could go up to 360 with the Vest. And uh, the speed is already explained, so I didn't want to drop any my, one of my stats. The defense as well was also pretty important for Tyranitar's Pursuit Trapping. I needed to make sure, like let's say I got off a T-Wave on it earlier in the game, and I decided to go into Victini and click V-Create. His uh, T-Tar comes in. It's still slower than me because it's T-Waved. I can U-Turn out and I can live his pursuit if he's not banded, so uh, it was important not to drop the defense. Also, I wanted to potentially be able to take hits from Infernape if it came down to it, uh, and some of his other physical attackers, like Gliscor, for example. Like, I can take an Earthquake if I'm not dropping my defense, so um, that's quite important. That's why Glaciate's on here in the first place, so that is my Victini. I'm taking quite a while on this te team builder. Uh, probably because I had the battle a while ago and I don't remember exactly every single uh, EV and why it's that way. So uh, here we have Mamoswine, and this Mamoswine is quite interesting. Uh, I'm running Leftovers, uh, almost max HP, almost no attack. <laughs> As you can see, I've only got 40 attack investment, but I need this HP to be able to, um, to, be able to take Mega Gardevoir's Hyper Voice. Uh, modest, max special attack. Uh, hyper voice from full oh, or after one round of leftovers if I come in on rocks uh, This is very important because as you can see my team has nothing that revenge kills Gardevoir at all Except for Victini, but Victini is easily pursuit trapped, so I can't rely on that completely uh, Of course, I am relying on Mamoswine to get up rocks So it's gonna be a, a rock setter, but I can catch him on a switch out uh, with rocks potentially if I'm threatening something important like for example his Tyranitar uh, his Infernape if it's locked into some strange move, his Gudra if he feels like I'm faster than him and he just wants to switch out or he doesn't want to catch a nice shard, I can get up rocks on that. We are of course running Thick 
excuse me, Thick Fat, because it covers uh, Gudra's Flamethrower if it wants to run that. Uh, Infernape's uh, Flare Blitz, I guess, even though that's going to do a ton. So uh, that's, I don't, I have no reason for Oblivious, so it's definitely going to be Thick Fat. And uh, yeah, Stealth Rocks, Ice Shard, Icicle Crash, and Earthquake, pretty standard. Uh, Earthquake into Ice Shard does kill max HP Gardevoir after Rocks. So, uh, there was no reason for me to run more attack, and I needed the HP 100%. So, this is one of my bulkier mons. It's able to take on his team quite well outside of, like, maybe Scizor and Infernape. Everything else is heavily, heavily threatened by Mammoth Swine. Like, I can take on Gengar because I'm max HP. Gudra scared out. Gliscor is scared out. Titar scared out. Gardevoir doesn't kill me. Uh, Electro doesn't do crap to this. Licky Licky can kind of 1v1 it, but that's about it. So, Mammoth Swine does a lot to him. Uh, I'm running the speed investment specifically for, what was it again? I think it was Gudra speed creeping something on my team that I can't remember now, so just never mind that. But anyway, uh, that is Mammoth Swine for you. Next up, we have Mira. I kind of flashed this earlier. So you can see we're a max speed F variant. This deals with, uh, most importantly, the Gengar. The Gengar is going to be a big issue if it comes. Uh, I don't have good Shadow Ball switches outside of Umbreon, so I have to be very careful. Um, obviously Pursuit's not going to do as much if he gets a burn, like let's say he's a Will-O-Wisp variant, uh, but I do have Wish Protect, Pursuit is nice for the Gengar regardless, it's still going to get off like 45% if um, he switches out even if I'm burned, and Heal Bell of course is to deal with the multiple status that he can spread around my team, uh, things like Gardevoir can run Toxic for the uh, Cresselia, I did run into that in one of my mocks, uh, he's got the Gliscor which can run Toxic, he's got Blastoise's Scald running around, Licky Licky's toxic. There's there's way too much status on his team to try to deal with my defensive cores, so I need Heal Bell to make sure that doesn't hinder me uh, going into the late game. So that's Mira. It's pretty straightforward. It's your standard Umbreon. Uh, there's nothing uh, really different about it other than running Pursuit over Foul Play. So uh, that can end up biting me in the butt, obviously, uh, if it's up against things like Infernape or Titar, uh, Scizor. But I don't typically want to stay in on Infernapes and Scizors. Or even Gardevoirs, like <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to stay in on those mons. So, yeah, that's uh, that's Mira for you. Then we have Eric. Finally, the Weezing, uh, Black Sludge, Flamethrower, HP Ice, Pain Split, and Sludge Bomb. Now, in both of the mocks that I did for this game, I didn't run into Gliscor. Gliscor didn't come. So HP Ice kind of seemed moot, and I was hesitant on bringing it, and I was like. I don't know if this is a good idea. I think I should probably swap this out for some kind of status, maybe Toxic Spikes, even though he has uh, the Gengar. If he doesn't bring the Gengar, then his guard can get, uh, his Mega Gardevoir can get poisoned. His Infernape, same thing. Titar would be nice to be poisoned. Gudra, same thing. Blastoise, Licky Licky. So I was con I was heavily considering uh, Toxic Spikes, but at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? If there's anything on my team that can properly 1v1 um, Gliscor without having to rely on skill swap, for example, with Cresselia, it's gonna be Weezing. Weezing takes it on very nicely, uh, and I can 2-hit KO him with HP Ice, uh, as long as he's not constantly roosting on me. Uh, if he would have to be Roost, Swords Dance, Itemless, um, or he can get rid of his item somehow, Acro, to beat me, and then at the end of the day, he's still revenge killed by Mammoth Swine, so... That's, uh, as soon as he kills me, he puts himself in range of Mamoswine's Ice Shard, so it doesn't matter. I'd rather have the HP Ice and be able to stay in on the Gliscor. Pain Split is, of course, there uh, to deal with the fact that, other than Wish, I don't have any recovery. Sludge Bomb covers his team quite nicely, uh, catches the Infernape, can get poisons on things like the Blastoise, the Gengar, the Licky Licky, uh, Electrodes, Le Leafeon. Obviously, I take on Leafeon really well with this thing, too. Uh, in case he brings it, because my team is kind of weak to it, actually. Uh, outside of maybe, like, Victini, everything else doesn't really deal with Leafeon too well, so... If he decides to bring that, I could be in trouble, so I'd rather have Weezing than not have Weezing, and having Sludge Bomb on it is pretty important, because it catches the switch into Gardevoir if he feels that that's safe at any point. Uh, it's the hardest hitting move that I have for Infernape, so uh, Sludge Bomb is just ultimately the best move. Flamethrower, of course, as you can probably tell, is for Scizor once again, just as with Salamence. Uh, because I want to be able to uh, to 1v1 that thing as well. I am maxed or almost maxed defense this week. I ran a little bit of speed uh, to make sure that I could outspeed a min speed scissor and be able to hit it with flamethrower before it could U turn out. So, in case he wants to run max bulk or uh, yeah, max HP, max attack, for example, because he doesn't feel like he needs the speed, I would run enough speed for uh, min speed crest personally on, uh, on scissor. But, you know, in case he decides to go full bulk, I'll find out with calcs and I'll know that Weezing can pretty much deal with Scizor, so 
uh, yeah, that's the team, and uh, we're going to hop right into the game, guys, and we'll see how it went. All right, guys, so here we are, and uh, the team that he decided to bring was Infernape. Pretty was pretty much was sure that was coming. Titar as well. Electrode was a little bit surprising. Mega Gardevoir made absolute sense. The Gliscor did come, so keeping HP Ice on my Weezing, good idea. And then we have uh, Gengar, which, of course, is a huge threat, like I said, in the Team Builder. Uh, if you guys didn't catch that, then that's fine. You can just skim through the video to see all the sets uh, that we ended up bringing. But I'm going to hop right into this. He leads off with his Infernape. I, in every mock, I let off with Weezing because Weezing has the best lead matchup in general against Fry's. Um, he, he can lead with Mega Gardevoir, but that's it. Like, everything else, Weezing can deal with to some extent. Uh, he has to fear a burn on T-Tar. This thing can catch a poison. I like that it's nicknamed Burke. I only just noticed that. <laughs> That's an awesome nickname. Um, the Gliscor can get HP iced. The Weezing I can switch out into uh, Umbreon on. And the Gardevoir I can switch out into Victini or Cresselia. Either one. So uh, what I'm going to do here is just throw out a Sludge Bomb. He predicts Toxic Spikes and he's going to go for the Taunt. And I'm actually going to catch the Poison here. Which ends up playing a little bit of a, a role in this game. Uh, as you guys are going to see, he switches out. He doesn't want his Infernape to go straight down. He's going to go straight into his Gengar. Going to get us off a Sludge Bomb. That does 10%. That's actually pretty significant damage as I'm going to switch out into Umbreon. And he ends up going for the Shadow Ball. Luckily for me, he doesn't Trick. He doesn't Will-O-Wisp. Nothing like that. And he is going to switch out. And I am going to catch this thing with a Pursuit and bring it down to 13%. Now, 13% on Showdown is anywhere between 12 and 13 so, I'm thinking, okay, uh, if he's at 12.6, rocks don't kill him. If he's anything lower, which is in my favor, then he's dead. Uh, if he was higher than 13, it would say 14. So, I know he's uh, a little bit lower than, thir uh, than 13, I just don't know where exactly. So, he's going to go out into his Infernape. On my uh, Umbreon, I calc this damage, and I find out that he can't knock me out with close combat uh, unless he's banded. And he went for taunt. So I'm pretty convinced he's not banded. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to protect. And on the following turn, he gets up rocks here. Uh, but on the following turn, I'm actually going to go for the wish. And this ends up panning out because he goes for Endeavor. So this is perfect for me. Uh, he's going to end up going down to Poison on the following turn. He's not going to stay in here, though. He plays this very smart. And he goes out into Gardevoir. Uh, and I could have Pursuit Trapped him uh, there. But that actually would have played against me, as you guys will see a little bit later. So I'm going to get in my Umbreon against the Gardevoir. And uh, I'm going to get back up to 74. I'm not going to bother protecting because I don't th want this thing Calm Minding up in my face. I'm going to go directly into my Cresselia as he goes for the Substitute. Very good play on his part now a uh, little bit of a strange play here uh, the interaction that happens is uh, I should have expected this realistically but there was always still the threat of calm mind so and my only attacking move is psychic as you guys know so I'm gonna take forever to break this sub and he's end he's gonna end up beating me down and uh, killing the rest of my team so I cannot risk him calm minding up so I'm gonna go straight into Victini as freeze actually makes an amazing play uh, going out into Titar, but that was his response to Cresselia. It's not like it was his response to uh, Victini or that he knew I was going to switch out. But I'm going to go for the um, Brick Break. As you can see, that would have killed outside of uh, the Tropical Berry, but he does have it. He lands the Stone Edge, gets a crit that didn't matter at all. Uh, as now I'm going to go out into Mamoswine, and I know that I'm threatening the Titar. I said this in my team builder. This is going to be my opportunity to get up rocks. He has a 6% Infernape, 5.3 to be exact. And... Um, He's, he has no reason to keep it at this point. He can sack it to Earthquake right here. And he does not have a good switch into this thing on his team. So I'm going to take this as an opportunity, knowing that he probably won't stay in, to get up my rocks. Because his T-Tar is still really good for my Cress. So I'm going to make the play, get up my rocks, and the Infernape comes in, dies to poison. Fantastic that I got that on the first turn. A little bit lucky. Ended up playing in my favor. So now he's going to go into Gardevoir. Once again, like I said in the Team Builder, I can live this Hyper Voice. And Gardevoir goes down to Earthquake. So, best two turns of the game for me right there. I got up my rocks. I'm able to chip away at the Titar. The Gengar is potentially dead. The Gliscor is checked by Weezing anyway. I don't need Mammoth Swine anymore. The Electrode can't do much to my team. I still have my Spadef wall in Umbreon, which at this point pretty much walls his entire team on its own. Uh, outside of Gliscor, maybe. Oh, we'll see that in the future, but... Um, anyway, Mamoswine did its job, two turns, went perfectly, and I'm still at 12%. Now, he brings in Electra. This was the funniest turn, uh, of the entire game. I could have gotten a third kill here. He goes for HP Ice. I go for Ice Shard because I think I'm going down. He goes for HP Ice, doesn't knock me out, 
leaves me at 3% because I'm so bulky and I'm thick fat that I end up resisting that and Electrode is super weak. I, I know this from having it in GPC and I probably should have calced the HP Ice damage because if I find out that he specs anyway, it doesn't matter. I can just go into Umbreon and click Wish or Pursuit. It like That doesn't matter. If he specs, he specs. But had I calced the, uh, the HP Ice uh, and found out that it wouldn't have killed my Mamoswine, I would have clicked Earthquake there. And the game would have been pretty much over because I still have Icicle Crash for the Gliscor and I have Earthquake for the Titar. So uh, Mamoswine would have ended up getting the rest of the kills, but unfortunately it goes down right here. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring in my Umbreon, which of course can take on this Electrode. Now he reveals Taunt. Uh, I completely slipped up and forgot that uh, Electro even got Taunt. Very nice play on Freeze's part. Uh, and he's going to go for the Gigavolt Havoc here. And this is going to do a ton of damage right here. It's going to do a whole 34%, so absolutely nothing. Uh, as you can see to Umbreon. <laughs> And that was just like the best possible turn for me. Anyway, I'm gonna keep this thing because in case his Gengar is actually still alive, uh, I don't want it to have a free end game and just sweep up my team. And my Weezing is not a uh, good switch into it at all. So I'm gonna end up going into Cresselia and I don't see a Toxic Orb on this Gliscor. It's Sandvale for his Titar. <laughs> and I was so upset, especially when he clicked Toxic. I was like, no. I can't skill swap this. That's horrible. So I'm going to go for Psychic. I'm going to get a Spadef drop. And obviously he can switch out on the following turn. Uh, I think I end up switching into Umbreon on this turn. I'm not 100% sure. But he goes into Electrode uh, as I do pull out a switch into my Umbreon. Now, again, he can taunt me here. Uh, what I'm going to do first is Protect to make sure that I get back a little bit of health uh, as that'll block his taunt. And he actually ends up going for another taunt. I thought he would just attack me predicting my pursuit, but... Uh, he does end up going for another taunt. At the end of the day, I guess for him it didn't make a difference. Uh, as little as it did for me, because one way or another I'm getting hit by a T-Bolt or a Volt Switch. He ends up going for the Volt Switch knowing that I'm locked into Pursuit and it's the only attack I can click. Uh, but I am going to get rid of the Electrode right there. And uh, Umbreon's still at 38%, not looking too bad. Now he goes into his T-Tar. Obviously this thing can kill me. I don't want it to kill me because his Gengar is still alive. So I'm going to go into my Cresselia and he's going to Stone Edge. And I'm going to die to the following Dark type move, which I believe is Crunch, uh, as he is faster than my Cresselia, very well EV'd. And uh, now I get in my Salamence. And it's all going to come down to whether or not his Gengar lives rocks. He stays in with his Titar. I disagree with this play. I think uh, that Freeze should have switched into Gengar, regardless of whether or not he thought it lived rocks. Because um, if it dies to rocks, then I don't get a Moxie boost. And he can take me on a little bit better with his Gliscor. Maybe Toxic Protect stall me down. So I think that was the better play. But either way, he's going to uh, let his T-Tar go down. I'm going to get the Moxie boost. He then follows up by going into Gengar to test out the waters. And his Gengar does drop to the rocks. It was at 12.3, I believe he told me. 12.1, he said in the chat, actually. Um, so yeah, it was not living rocks, uh, 100%. And he's gonna go into his Gliscor, I end up calcing this, I know the Dragon Claw is going to kill, I believe, 93% of the time, if he's a max defense variant, so, uh, yeah, very good game to Freeze right there, I end up picking a, up a 3-0 win. It could have been a 5-0 had I known that Electrode wasn't going to knock me out, uh, but I believe that the Ice Shard damage was just better in general. Like, Electrode could have actually done damage to me in the end game if it wasn't for Umbreon, and Umbreon could have been taken out by maybe Gliscor's Toxic, or uh, an unfortunate crit from Titar, because I was specially defensive, so I uh, didn't want to play around with that, but uh, Grandina, once again, picking up the sweep in the end game. believe they got uh, two kills there, because the Rock's kill goes to Mamoswine on the uh, Gengar, so it only gets two kills, unfortunately, uh, but I believe it is up to five now, after the uh, three uh, Mon sweep from last week, so looking quite nice uh, for Grandina here, uh, looking comfortable to maybe take the MVP spot this season, I don't know, but we'll we'll find out. Anyway, that's uh, that's the game guys. As always, make sure to check out my opponent in the description down below, uh, he, great game to Fry's, GG man, uh, he did, uh, I keep switching between Fry's and Freeze, it's because it's spelled 
Fries, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not insane. It's spelled Fries. You guys see that on your screen, but it's Frieslander. So I keep, I keep bouncing back and forth. But anyway, make sure to go check out his link in the description uh, down below. Go check out his side of the battle. Uh, there's probably some interesting things you can find out about his sets that we didn't get to see uh, in this game. He pretty much told me the majority of them, and we got to see a lot of them on our own. Uh, Titar was D-Dance. That could have been a huge problem for me, by the way, guys. Titar was, in fact, Dragon Dance, so... Yeah, uh, that could have been horrible. <laughs> Absolutely horrible if he decided to click Dragon Dance on my Cresselia and I missed T-Wave. Uh, I could have lost the game right there. So, very, very fortunate that he decided to go for Crunch on me. Uh, but yeah, go check out uh, Freeze and as well as all the other uh, NPL coaches in the description down below. All the links pertaining to the NPL, if I haven't said this already, are all down there. So make sure to go do that. Uh, if you guys are still cheering us on after week three, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.